Welcome to Faith Revival Holiness um, Church, Synagogue, and Parish. I'm your host, minister, and prophet, uh, the servant of God. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. Father, I ask for your comfort to go forth and help the people. Help them in, in all the struggles and all their victories both. And we thank you, Father, for the children to be raised in victory and not in defeat and those children that are struggling and because of all the emotional strain that was put on them for what has happened in the last three and a half years I ask that to be removed cast in the sea of forgiveness goodness and that they will know that they, they are loved by their their mommy and daddies and aunts and uncles and and all the people and their little friends and that they they can go on now. And as, like for all of us, we can all go on. We cannot stay in a rut, but we got to get out of the rut. And we got to do great new things, each one of us. And we can. And the encouragement of one another and God back in good things that we do. We can all become that great society that God has called each of us to be. And so we thank you and praise you, Father, for all these things. Amen. All right. We're going to do more of the book of Jeremiah, yes. And Jeremiah, uh, Zay Dabar, this word, the book of, of Jeremiah, 41 through 16. 41, 1 through 16, and 42, 1 through 12. So let us open the word of God and get ready. Amen. And it says, this word came to Yermayu from Yah, after uh, Navarizar Adon, the commander of the guards had left him in Ramah. And after having taken him and bound him in chains, which all the captives from Jerusalem and Judah had been carried off to Babel, the commander of the guards took Yeremiah and said to him, Yah, your God, decrees a decrees this disaster for this place. And Yah has brought it about, and he has done what he has said he would do. Because you people have sinned against Yah and did not listen to what he said. So here's here's a man uh, of the guards on the other side that has some common sense that even has been shown this. You know, that's amazing, isn't it? How, how uh, God will even use those that could be in the world. We don't know if he was, he knew about God. He must have knew a little bit because he knew what the God of Israel's name was, right? And so he knew some things that we can strategize here that he, but did, but I don't think he was in the, definitely not in the same level <laughs> as the one he was talking with, and not even knowing that Jeremiah prophesied it, and he was telling and confirming to Jeremiah again that what was said through Jeremiah came about. Testifying, and God was using this other man to testify and show that. Amen. And Yah had brought it about, and he had done what he said he would do. Because you people sin against Yah and did not listen to what he says, and that is why this has come to you. And now today I am uh, failing you uh, from the chains of your hands, freeing you from the chains of your hands, and it, it seems good to you to come with me to Babel. You from the uh, to come to Babel, and I will look after you as well. But it seems not good 
to you to come with me to Babel, then don't. The entire land is in front of you. Whatever seems good to, or right for you to do, go in there and do. This is this is the guy on the side of the what's taken over is it right now a Babel, right? This is the guard. He's he's treating him like a king. He's treating Jeremiah like a king. This is what God will do for each of our lives too. As we're faithful in the little things, God will make you faithful in the greater things. And this is exactly what's happening to Jeremiah. You know, Jeremiah literally had a choice, but he knew what choice he should go and do. Amen. Before Jeremiah could answer, uh, ne uh, never, Adon said, go back then to uh, Gadaya, the son of uh, Achiki, the son of uh, Shaphan, who the king of Babel has made governor over the city of Jerusalem, uh, Judah, and live there with him among the people or go wherever it seems right for you to go. Uh, so he's he's literally handing like the kingdom to Jeremiah here. Amen. This is what happens when you're faithful to God and it looks all bad. I mean, Jeremiah went through a lot. He was in, a, in dirt and mud and feeling pretty sick himself, probably being in that well, right, that we read uh, earlier and all the beatings he went. And now he's, he's, he's been given everything, literally. The commander of the guards gave him a provision and gifts. Provision and gifts. Get that. And and dismissed him. And Jeremiah, who then went to uh, Gedaliah, the son of Achakim, in uh, uh, Pasfa, and living with him among the pe people who were left in the land. Now all the the Fields force commanders and their men heard that the king of Babel had made uh, Gedalia, the son of king governor in the land, and had committed to his care men, women, and children, and some of the poorest people in the land. Did you hear that? Some of the poorest people in the land got these really nice, what we call cushy jobs, cool jobs, right? That's pretty good, isn't it? And and those who had not been carried to Babel, and and they uh, approved to uh, Gedalia and um, uh, Mitzvah, and uh, particular uh, uh, the Ismail, Ismail, the son of uh, Natanya, uh, uh, Yachan, and Yautin and Yazaya, the son of uh, Makat, they said to these men, by the way, aren't you glad that we don't have to have names exactly like this, not to be disrespectful to maybe people that might still have these super galactic law names, but uh, aren't you glad you, you have uh, not a name like this in 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 general. That's a little bit harder um, for people to, to you know get a hold of right away on you know. But people that have these kind of things, that's great. But you know, people that a lot of languages, this is kind of a little rougher, you know. But they had lots of names, you know, and that's good for that day. Amen. Uh, a good Dahlia. The son of Echakim, the son of Aphim, swore to them and their men, Don't be afraid to serve the Kishtims. Live in the land, serve the king of Babel, uh, and the things will go well with you. As for me, I will live in uh, Mishapav and be uh, uh, supported to the Kishtims who come to us. But you, Harvest wine, summer fruit, olive oil. Put them in your containers. Live in your cities that you have taken, been taken over. 
Likewise, when all the Judeans who were in Moab and uh, Edom among the people of Adam, and in all the countries heard that the king of Babel had left the remnant of Judah and had appointed Gedaliah, the son of Archimon, the son of Shaphan, governor then, then all the Judeans returned from all the places where, uh, where they had been driven and came to, to the land of Judah, to uh, Gedalia and uh, Mizpah, and the harvest wine and the summer fruit and the great abundance. And Yochum, on the son of uh, Keras, on all the uh, field uh, force men commanders came to uh, Gadalia and uh, Mizpah and said to him, Are you aware that uh, Belisus, the, the king of the people of Ammon, have sent uh, Ismael, the son of uh, Tanya, to take your life? But Gen Gedalia, the son of Achim, did not believe them. And then uh, Yochaman, the son of uh, Karach, the spoke privately to, with Gedalia in Mizpah, and please let me go and I will kill uh, Yismiel, the son of Tanya. And no one will know, and why let him as uh, assault you? Moreover, if if he does, all the Jeans gather around with with uh, will, and the remnant of of Judah will perish. But but Gadalia, the son of Achman, said to Yochaman, when in, in English is John, so John was a prominent name even way back, Yochaman, and the son of uh, Karach, don't do it. What you are saying about Ishmael is not true. And in the seventh month of uh, Ishmael, the son of Netanya, the son of uh, Elijma of the royal blood and one of the chief officers of the king came with ten men to Gedalia in, in uh, Mizpah while eating a meal together there in Mizpah. Uh, Ishmael then and the ten men with him rose and attacked Gedalia the son of uh, Achman the son of Ashafin, uh, struck him and, ro and rose and attacked uh, Gendalia, the son of Ak with a sword and uh, insulted the man whom the, the king of Babel had appointed as governor in the land. And Ishmael also murdered all the Judeans were, who were uh, with Gendalia and Mish uh, uh, Mispa, and as well as the Kashtim soldiers found there. And the next day, before he assaulted uh, of of Gadalia and had become known, eighty men of Shechem and Sholo and Sharon came with beards shaved off. And clothed and tore and, and gashed on their bodies. And they get uh, grain uh, offerings and frankincense with their pre presented of the house of Yah. And uh, Ishmael, the son of um, Nanatenya, went out from Mishpah to meet them, weeping all along the way on meeting them. And he said to them, Come to uh, Gedaliah, the son of Achimim. But 
Once they were inside the city, Ishmael, the son of, of Naphtali, and the men with him slaughtered them and threw them into the cistern. However, the, the ten of them said to uh, Ishmael, Don't kill us, for we have stories of wheat and barley and olive oil and honey hidden for the field. So he relented and did not kill them along with their comrades. And the, and the system in which Yeshmael threw the corpse of the man had been murdered with Kedalia was one of Asia the king had made in, in the fear of Basham, the king of Israel. It was this system that uh, Yishmael, the son of Nemetaya, filled the slaughter of the men when uh, Yishmael carried off the captivities of the rest of the people, Mishpah, the king's daughter and all the people, and left in Mishpah. So this is a different Ishmael than the one that a lot of people know. This is someone else that had the name Ishmael. Um, but the but the one that everybody knows, this is this is a different this is a different person than that one. Okay, so you know. And whom uh Nav uh Nav Aden, the commander of the guards, had committed to the care of Gadaya, the son of uh, Arkim. And uh Ishmael, the son of uh Nantania, carried them off captured and left to cross over to the people of Ammon. The people of Ammon and Moab, those are, and Mo, those particular are from Lot, the, the sons of Lot. And then uh, Yomotan, the, the son of uh, Keras, all and the military commanders with him heard of all the crimes committed by uh, Yishmael, the son of Nanatea, and they took all the men and went attack Yishmael, the son of Nanatea, and they found him by a big pool and gave on. And when all the uh, Ishmael captured Saul uh, Yochaman, the son of uh, the son of uh, Karish, and all the military commanders with him, and they were overjoyed. So all the people, all of the people of uh, Ishmael had carried off captive from uh, Mishpah, turned and joined Yochimon, the son of uh, Karich. For but Ishmael, the son of Nemetea, escaped from Yochimon with eight men and went. Uh, to the people of Ammon. And Yochaman, the son of uh, Karich, uh, freed uh, uh, and the military commanders with him and them took all the rest of the people he had freed from uh, Ishmael and the son of Nanatea and those that Ishmael had take from Mishpah and after the assault of uh, of Gedaya, the, the son of uh, Achim, and the, the the heroes and soldiers and the women and the children and the officers he had brought back from Gimon, and they left there and stayed in uh, uh, Kimman Lodge near Bet Lachem. Indeed, to go on to Egypt, and th thus escaped the Keshtims, and they were afraid of them because of Ismael, the son of Nebatea, and had murdered Gadalia, the son of Achmin, whom the king of Babel had appointed governor in the land. And then all the military commanders, and Yotman, Yo the son of uh, Karach, 
and Yazania, the son of Hoshaya, and all the people, and from all the, the least of the greatest, approached and said to Yeremiah, the prophet, I beg you, approve our request, pray for us uh, to Yah, your God, for all our all of us remaining. For while once we were numerous, only a few of us left. As you can see, pray that Yah, your God, will tell us what direction to take and, and what, where to go. That's a good prayer. What direction we should take and where we should go. That's good. And Jeremiah, who the prophet, said to them, I hear you. All the right, I will pray for Yah, your God, as you have asked. And whatever Yah answers you, and I will tell you, and I will, will withheld nothing from you. And and he said to and and they said to Yeremiah, May Yah be tr true and faithful witness against us if we have failed to do any part of what Yah your God gives you to tell us, whether it's good or bad, and we will listen to what Yah our God says, and we will disperse you, dispatch you to him that things will go well with us. So we heed what Yah our our God says. Ten days later. The word of Yah came to Yermaihu. So he said to Yochaman, the son of Kerich, all the military commanders with him and all the people from the least to the greatest, and said to them, You sent me to present your request to Yah, your God of Israel. This is what he says. If you will stay in the, this land, and then I will rebuild you up and pull you and, and not pull you down. And I will plant you and not uproot you. For I am relenting from, from the calamities and unfortunates of you. Don't be afraid for, for of the king of Babel, of whom you are afraid. Don't be afraid of him, says Yah. For I am with you to save you, Yah, salvation. Yeshua, and you, and to rescue you from the, his power. And I will take pity on you so that, so that he will take pity on you and cause you to return to the land. But if you say, we will not stay in this land, thereby not heeding what Yah, your God, is saying, Instead of saying no, we will go to the land of Egypt because there is will be well from seeing war or hearing of the shofar sounding alarm or being short of food, so that we will stay. Uh, so we won't stay here. Then hear what Yah says. The remnant of Judah. This is what Yah Tzad of the the God of Israel says. If you are determined to go to Egypt and stay there. The sword of which you are afraid will overtake you, and there will be in the land of Egypt and famine, and which you are afraid of, and will pursue you relentlessly there to in the Egypt, and there will you will die. Thus, this is how. It will be for all people demanding to, to go to Egypt and stay there. And they will die by the sword, famine, and plagues, and, and none of them will return or escape from the disasters that I will bring upon them. For here is what Yahtzeh, the God of Israel, says. Just as my anger and theory were poured out on the inhabitants of Jerusalem, so likewise, my fury will be poured out on you and that go to Egypt, so that you will become an object of ridicule and a 
atonement of the curse and reproach, and you will see this place no more. And Yah, Yah has spoken concerning you, remnant of Judah. Don't go to Egypt. You have known for the fact that I have given you fair warning today, for you have been saying, pray for us to Yah your God. Tell us everything that Yah your God says, and, and we will do it. Today I have told it to you, but you haven't heed any part of what Yah your God gave me to tell you. Therefore know for a fact that you will die by the sword and famine and plagues in the place where you want to go to live. So there's, there's a sense of obedience that we have to have in every generation of obeying God and not doing the opposite of what God wants our, our lives to go. Our our nations at that matter, our states, our providences. But we have to do what God wants. And because when we do what God wants, we're under God's blessing and God's care. And even wicked people will, will turn to do what is right because of the fact that God is caring for us because we're doing what God wants. We're in God's will. And when you're out of God's will, then everything, you know, all these things go wrong with you. And this is what has happened in this world is God has got out of the umbrella of God's care and to the, to the storm where they're being ripped apart. This is why we need to soar, obeying the living God, obey what he wants, obey his will for your life. And it will go well with you. Even if there's challenges, God will help and give the proper things that we will need for those challenges. Amen. God Almighty loves you, and I love you, and more importantly, Yeshua loves you, the, the Spirit of, Yeshua, uh, of, of God, and He guides us, and we must be Spirit-filled. It's, it's one thing to be born again. It's another thing to follow through and be the fullness of the oil, and that's being Spirit-filled, Spirit-filled with Yeshua, the Spirit of God. Amen. To be guided and do right, and, and when God has called you to do something, you do it. When God has called you to become a leader, or whatever it is, and you do what God wants, it will it will fulfill your life and many other people's life. But when you say, no, I'm not going to become a leader, because of all, and all that, you're disobeying God, and therefore the judgment of God is on your own head for not obeying what God People in the church and the synagogue and parish, you don't speak enough about this, but we got to obey God. When God tells you to do something, when God commands you to become something, and you do not, you go away from it, you're, you get in trouble with the Father God. And the Spirit of God gets hurt by that, and you don't want to do that. You don't want to hurt the Spirit of Yeshua like that. And, and so we got to obey God's will for our life through knowing who the will is and therefore knowing the ways of God. Amen. So these people, some of them in their heart, didn't want to obey God. They wanted to go to Egypt, back to sin, because not to represent the nation as sin, but symbolically, Egypt always represented when people wanted to go back to it as sin. So symbolically, we need to not go back to the sin. We need to, our doubt, our fear, or all these abusive things that we shouldn't get into, but we should stay where, and, and where God can minister to us and become great men and women that God says we are. But just don't go back into Egypt. God, God wants to heal the land. God wants to heal you. But do do you do respect God? That's another thing. If you don't respect God, how can you get healed by God? How can a nation recover if they're not going to say they're sorry for what they've done? And right now, there's many nations that need to say they're sorry to God and not trusting Him. And, and they get it off in the fears and tangents and things that, are, that hurt others and hurt each other and all the things that we have become. 
instead of a great people. That God calls us to be. And out of all this foolishness and back into wisdom of, of understanding and becoming that great people that God says we can be. Amen. So I want to pray for many of you because many of you need to get born again and, and also spirit filled today. Pray this prayer. Dear God, yeah, I ask you into my uh, heart, my soul and spirit. Be Father and King and Savior over it. I thank you, Yeshua, the Spirit of God, the Messiah, for what you did on the cross and how you helped everybody in the Bible to this day, all throughout it, and how you are the great Spirit of God and the Messiah, both, and how you will help us. And I pray that they be Spirit-filled, full of you, Yeshua, as well as being born again. I thank you and I praise you for those that accepted these things right now by faith. Shalom to you. Be whole and be, may you manifest the great treasures that God has given you and to do great things for your fellow brothers and sisters. And to follow the callings that each of you have. Remember, it's to roll up your sleeves and to get to work, making your communities great again. Do not ever go back to defeatment like you have for the last three and a half years. Be the people of faith and not fear. No more fear. Be in faith. Faith that builds our towns, that builds our families, that builds our states, that builds our providence, that builds our nations. But fear tears it all down to sunder. And the only one that wins is Satan when you do that. But everybody wins when we're in faith and we're building and we're, we're, we're restoring and the restoration of people's hearts and, and everything that needs to go and be done. Amen. I pray for repentance on every politician. They, may they all come to repentance and come out of the darkness that they put all of us into. May all be see all be generous with their money and not stingy. And may all the news media shut their mouth when they have when they're doing Mark and Bird media and they're not doing good, righteous, everyday, understandable things that are going on and truthfulness. And so we thank you, Father. That that all the those that have done wrong on the top will be arrested now. They'll be all arrested, and they they will they will have to repent and relent of what they've done and tell the truth of how many of these things were not right that they did. And may that may everybody that got hurt for the three and a half years worth of this abomination that they've done, may they have to repay one hundredfold back to the people and their communities for what they have done. And we thank you, Father, and we praise you, Father, for biz new businesses arising, new small businesses arising up by faith and coming forth. New new businesses, new restaurants, new, new fast food restaurants, new regular restaurants, new community of things to help the community and, 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 and also um, great greatness arising up out of even over our children and out of the adults and everybody. And may people re be restored as they reverent God again in this the nations of the world. And the nations that refuse get ready for judgment. For that's all that's left for you is the judgment of God. For the nations that don't repent, for the nations that to allow their leaders to go on buffaloing them and destroying and stealing your monies like they've done. May they all have to pay everything a hundredfold back to the people that have been hurt by the three and a half years of abomination that they have caused you. May, may they give a settlement amount to everybody that has been hurt by these things. And may, most people have one way or another. May, may they start doing it now. May the bills fly open and may they pass it right now. Pass the bill right now. 
to, for, for helping the small businesses, the farmers, and all the ranchers, and all the people that have job and jobs been taken away or this, their disabilities or seniors, or, and all these people given extra money. This month, even if it's possible, push it through and forget about all this nonsense spending and spend it on the people. That's where it needs to be spent. Don't spend it on big business and all these things you want to do. Spend it on the people because it's right and rightful and put a limit on these things. Take care of the poorest like Mother Teresa was showed by the Spirit of God to 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 the least to those that need a little more. Take care of the least of the least first. But we, I would add that the military veterans, seniors should always be taken care of first. Because therefore the blessings of Yeshua will be so great on us by doing the remembrance of those things and what they have done. Amen. God bless you. May, may God Almighty keep you in all his ways and shine upon you. And then the rest of, of God Almighty be with you. Shalom to you. Shalom. Be with you. God bless you. I know things are rough, but things can get better too. You know, it's the faithfulness that brings us through hard times. The faithfulness that we have in God and the faithfulness that we have in each other abilities to, to, to become the great people that God has called each of us to be. Yes, uh, we will build bridges and, and things like matter, but not in the bad way that they're proposing. They just have to start learning to do bills that have a couple of things in it and not 50 things, because that's nonsense. So much hardness to go through and all that, it's nonsense. Start making small bills. Be honest. Honest approach will bring the blessing of God. To the Senate and the House of Representatives. An honest approach and a, and a heart that cries out to do what is right for the people. And for our nation. And, and to do it in the righteous way that God would want it. And then the blessings flow from there. Instead of the judgment. Because those that are dishonest will be judged for what they've done wrong. Clear very clear. God bless you. I see you again. God bless.